at, at Awasi in Kisumu <clears throat> County involving a passenger bus and trailer has claimed the lives of 13 people and scores ha others have been seriously injured and the accident is said to have occurred at around 11.30 p.m. The bus belonging to Eldoret Express was going to Nairobi uh, while the truck was heading towards Kisumu town. Police have said that the driver of the bus was trying to overtake a tractor ferrying sugarcane when the vehicle crashed into the oncoming trailer. Not the first time we've had an accident caused by this. Uh, most of the injured have been rushed to Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga Teaching and Referral Hospital. And right now we can uh, speak to a correspondent who has been on this beat uh, since the early hours of today. Oko Kusa, if you could per first start with the confirmation of uh, what we know at this moment and where you are. Yes, Mark, uh, what we know at this moment is that 13 people lost their lives in this grisly accident, as we mentioned there. We are made to understand four of them were male adults, uh, another, f not, not four, but three. Three were male adults, and another three were, all, uh, not really three, by the way, let me just uh, correct that. Three were, m six, six were male adults, and six were female adults, and then there was also a child. We are also made to understand that both the drivers, that is the driver of the vehicle, of the bus and the, the, the trailer also perished on the spot when this particular accident happened at a place known as Pala, which is three kilometers away from Awasi. Remember, from Awasi to Kisumu is 42 kilometers. And where I am now is at the Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Teaching and Referral Hospital, where 14 uh, victims of this particular accident were rushed to, and they are currently re receiving treatment behind me there at the casualty section. Remember this thing, this particular accident also happened at a time when some of the health workers who are on a go slow here in Kisumu County, only uh, a handful of them have uh, so far resumed duties. So there's been some kind of crisis, even at a Hero Sub County Hospital where some of the victims were first rushed and couldn't get uh, assistance from that particular hospital. We've just spoken with uh, a survivor here who narrated to us how they uh, attempted to get help from a number of health facilities in that particular area, including some private hospitals, but uh, they couldn't uh, uh, be treated because of uh, lack of uh, sufficient personnel, and therefore they were, had to be rushed here at Jaramogi Oginga, uh, Oginga Teaching and Referral Hospital, where they are currently receiving treatment. Most of these people are uh, or got uh, injured mostly on the head. Uh, they had head. In they have head injuries. And, and some of them actually are not even speaking, as, we, uh, uh, as we've just uh, uh, realized. Uh, a, a policeman at the scene uh, told us, disclosed to us, that uh, four people were seriously injured whilst they were trying to uh, rescue them from the, the wreckage. Um, again, uh, we also maybe like to uh, bring to the attention of our viewers that uh, this particular accident happened last night at around 11.30 p.m. The bus had just uh, left Kisumu at around uh, 10.30. Remember, it originated from Bondo. That is uh, where most of the passengers who were in that ill-fated bus had boarded, the, had boarded it. That is in Bondo uh, in Siaya County. And uh, when they got to Kisumu, it took another one or so hours before they departed. We are talking of about 36 passengers in the bus at the time of the accident. This is a bus which has a capacity of 41 or 42 thereabouts. And uh, according to the conductor who survived the accident, uh, we've just spoken with him in here. He says that at the time of the accident, they had 36 passengers on board. And uh, the, as you've also mentioned there in the intro, is that uh, the driver of the bus was in the process of attacking a tractor which was ferrying cane and then uh, it uh, rammed into the oncoming trailer which was traveling on the opposite direction. That is somewhere around uh, Agawasi, three kilometers away from Awali at a, at a place known as Pala. So that is what has happened. A lot of people have gotten serious injuries. There were children in the bus, but only one, uh, as we have made to understand, uh, according to the Nyanza Regional Police Commandant Victor Makoha is that only one child perished in, in this particular accident so far. So there are a lot of uh, uh, people still fighting for their lives in there. Of course, uh, the medics, uh, quite a handful of them uh, we've just seen, as I mentioned there, there has been a lot, some ghost law uh, on health workers, among health workers here in Kisumu, and only a handful of them have so far resumed uh, duties, Mark.
Uh, Oko Okusa, you've mentioned something there that has not been the first time that has happened. And uh, any uh, confirmations from the scene, I'm not too sure if you've been able to uh, get to the particular scene of the accident. As you've said, it's Pala, about three kilometers from Awasi Trading Center. But just to confirm that indeed the tractor was involved in this particular accident. It's not the first time we're hearing about this. Well, I was at the scene actually. We've been there since 1 a.m. We've just uh, come to the hospital at around 5 to find out uh, what's happening with the survivors. And uh, we witnessed there the wreckages being uh, towed away. And of course, as you mentioned there again, uh, the issue of uh, cane tractors uh, operating on these roads is an, it's something that has been of a great concern. They have actually been uh, mentioned to, to, to cause. Uh, quite a number of accidents. Remember these cane tractors, some of them actually don't even have a sufficient lighting or reflectors on them and therefore they pose great, great danger to motorists plying these routes. And uh, of course, this is not the first time such a, an accident uh, has been caused or uh, has happened in, uh, in regards to, to, to the cane tractors that uh, ply these routes. So, uh, as we also made to understand is that uh, according to one of the survivors here, a woman we've just spoken with says that uh, the, 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 that particular cane tractor which uh, of course uh, ended up causing this particular accident did not have sufficient light and only the driver only realized when it was too late that he was going to slam, to ram into it and that is why he swerved or tried to overtake it and uh, in the process was involved in that head-on collision with the oncoming trailer. So that is a concern. Actually, uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, suggestions, people trying to say that the, the cane transportation should be restricted only to daytime and, there, and this particular uh, transport uh, vehicles should be banned from operating during the night because of lack of sufficient lighting and reflectors. And that, of course, translates into the dangers or the risks that they pose to other motorists on the road. Mark. Kokusa, thank you very much for this update.